Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1, GV Whiskey One. Good vibrations. I uh, got another question uh, about antennas that I thought is, is very interesting, and I'll bet a lot of people wonder the same thing. A lot of ham radio operators wonder about this. So I thought I'd do my best to answer the question. Will a high standing wave ratio on a feed line increase the probability or the risk of that line radiating when you don't want it to? Now the ideal transmission line or feed line from your radio to your antenna shouldn't radiate at all. The purpose of the feed line in most antenna systems, anyway, is to carry the radio frequency energy from your radio to the antenna without letting any of it go along the way. It's supposed to go from the antenna and come into the antenna as well, and similarly, a well-designed feed line should not pick up or receive any radio frequency energy either. So it shouldn't matter what the standing wave ratio is. Uh, with open wire line, a high standing wave ratio is generally not a big deal. With coaxial line, it can be, uh, particularly if it's more than three to one or so. Uh, it, it can sometimes cause problems such as excessive current or voltage in the feed line if you run very much power. But the standing wave ratio on a transmission line has nothing to do with the, the danger or the risk of that line radiating. There are plenty of antennas, uh, especially again with open wire line, that run very high standing wave ratio on the transmission line and yet the line uh, is an ideal line in the sense that it doesn't radiate significant or uh, energy or pick up significant RF energy. Uh, Contrary-wise, a feed line can be perfectly matched, at least as far as uh, uh, theoretical uh, considerations go. Um, 50 ohm uh, transmission line can be perfectly or perfectly matched to a 50 ohm. Uh, say inverted V uh, half wave antenna. Yet, if you don't run the feed line away from the antenna uh, at the right angle, so that it so that the antenna is asymmetrical with respect to the feed line, you will get radiation from that line, unless you take countermeasures to prevent it, like put. RF chokes at intervals along the line and you really don't want to have to bother with all of that if you can avoid it. You can have a, a perfectly matched line that is a lousy transmission line in the sense that it radiates a lot and picks up a lot that, when it shouldn't. Contrary wise, uh, you can have a, a transmission line with an enormously high standing wave ratio. Say a, a full wavelength center fed antenna that's two half waves in phase or a double zep fed with say 450 ohm ladder line might have a standing wave ratio of 10 to 1 but the transmission line if it's balanced and if the antenna is symmetrical with respect to that line uh, that line should not radiate you know if the line doesn't run near metal objects or other things that would tend to unbalance the line. So the answer to, to the question is that they are two entirely different and separate issues and are caused and by the same are, are caused by entirely different types of problems uh, and uh, therefore they can they can coexist or just one of them can exist, but ideally, of course, you want to have a perfectly matched line and a line that doesn't radiate at all. But that's not 
necessarily a requirement. I would say, though, that line radiation is a much more serious problem uh, and is much more worthy of our concern than is a high standing wave ratio all by itself. Hope that helps. That's what I'm here for. Dr. Jubilisco. <laughs> I don't have a PhD, by the way. I'm just a regular old bachelor. Call sign W1, GV Whiskey One Good Vibration saying 73. And high to SWR or low, feed line radiation or no. In CW, my native fist always translates to da 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 da. -da.